All right, folks, so this is the second video in uh, our videos for how to classify fingerprints as worlds. And in the first video on worlds, we talked about first what a, what a world is. We mentioned that a world is a fingerprint pattern that has a circuit uh, or a form of circular formation in the middle of the print that is surrounded on the left and on the right by uh, delta. So we'll have at least one delta on the left and one on the right. Uh, we talked about the different types of uh, worlds. There's four types. There's the plane world, which is the most common, the double loop world, the central pocket loop world, and the accidental world. And we talked about how to identify each of those four. We also talked in our, in our last video that when we do the notation on a fingerprint card when we're classifying prints, that we write a W underneath each world. But then in the top right-hand corner of the, the box that has the fingerprint in it, we either write a P for a plane world, a C for a central pocket loop world, a D for a double loop world, or an X for an accidental world. But when we were talking in our last video, you may have noticed that next to either that P, C, D, or X, there's also another letter, either an I, an O, or an M. And that's because each world also has another subclassification referring to what's called its, its tracing. Uh, and tracings are designated with the letters I, O, or M. So, for example, if you were to look at a fingerprint, you might see next to it a C and an O, meaning it's a central pocket whorl with an outer tracing. Or you might see a C and an I, indicating it's a central pocket whorl with an inner tracing. So we need to talk about what this tracing is. Uh, what a tracing is, is a tracing refers to the position of the deltas in the whorl relative to each other. In other words, uh, where is the whorl on the left relative to the whorl on the right? Uh, are they inside or outside of each other? The reason we call it a tracing is because we literally trace a path uh, from the delta on the left to the delta on the right. So I'm going to skip a couple slides, which I'm going to come back to in a moment. We're going to look at this, this world here. So what we do is, when we do a tracing, we locate the delta on the left side, and then we locate the delta on the right side. So here we have what would be a plain world. Again, we have a delta here on the left, we have a delta here on the right. We can see our circle or circuit formations. Notice how this imaginary line crosses one of those. Now, to figure out its tracing, what we want to do is we want to follow the ridges and follow them from the left to the right-hand side and see what happens with that pathway. So if we were to trace an imaginary line from the delta on the left all the way along this ridge to the delta on the right, does that pathway, do those deltas meet each other along the pathway? Or does that pathway come inside of this delta? Or does it go outside of the delta? So we have what's called an inner tracing, an outer tracing, and a meeting tracing. In this case, we have what's called a meeting tracing. So we would say that this world is a plain world with an M or meeting tracing. So how do we determine whether it's inner, outer, or meeting? So I'm going to go back to those slides I skipped just a moment ago. All right, so tracing. When we do a tracing, what we do is we trace an imaginary line from the delta on the left to a point opposite the, del the right delta. So we trace a line from the left delta all the way to as close as we can get to the right delta. Now, remember, some fingerprints that are whorls might actually have more than two deltas. For example, you can have accidental whorls that can actually have three deltas, in which case you would trace a line from the farthest left delta to the farthest right delta. Now as you're, as you're going along a ridge, remember some ridges stop, and so if the ridge stops, we continue our trail or our tracing by dropping down one ridge. Uh, if we're following a ridge from left to right and that ridge forks or if it bifurcates, we follow the lower fork of that bifurcation. Uh, we stop our tracing at a point opposite the right delta and then what we do is we count the ridges between that point and the, the delta on the right. If there are three or more ridges inside the right delta, the tracing is considered an inner tracing, so we designate it with an I. If there are three or more ridges outside the right delta, the tracing is an O or outer tracing. If there are one or two ridges either inside or outside the right delta, or if the tracing stops exactly on the right delta, the tracing is noted as a meaning tracing. 
uh, it is not necessary to count more than three ridges. So if it's more than three, that's fine. All right, so again, going back to this fingerprint we looked at a moment ago. So here is our plane whirl. It's definitely a plane whirl. We have our delta on the left, and we have our delta on the right. So what we do when we do our tracing is we start with the delta on the left, and we follow along until it ends. If it ends, then we drop down to the next ridge. So I'm going to drop down. I'm going to continue my tracing along this ridge until I reach a, a point as close to the other delta as I can. In this case, my line actually meets the other delta. So if we were to put this dotted line here to indicate that tracing, we would notice that, that our, our tracing here actually flows from one delta and then actually meets the other delta. So we would actually call this a meeting tracing. So if I was designated in this whirl, it's a plane whirl with a meeting tracing. So in my right-hand corner, I would write P and M. But let's look at this whirl. So here we have a whirl. We have, uh, again, it's a plane whirl. Remember, we have our delta here on the left. We have our delta here on the right. If we trace our imaginary line, we can see that it crosses one of those circuit or circular formations. So it's definitely a plane whirl. In terms of doing our tracing, we start at the delta on the left. We come, and when it stops, we drop down one ridge. So we drop down a ridge. We come along. Notice how when we come to a bifurcation, remember the rule is that we follow the bifurcation that's lower, so we go lower. Here we come to another bifurcation. So again, what do we do? We go lower, and then we keep going until we get to a point as close to the other delta as we can. Well, this is kind of where we stop, because here's the delta way up here. All right, we count one, two, three ridges. These ridges are outside or farther from the core than the delta itself. itself. So we would say that this uh, particular fingerprint is a plane whirl with an outer tracing. So we put P and O. And again, that's because the tracing goes outside of the other delta. So this is an outer tracing, or a P and an O. All right, let's look at this fingerprint. All right, so here we have a, uh, a whirl. We have our circuit formation here in the middle. We have our delta on the left. So type line, type line, here's our delta. Type line, type line, here's our delta. All right, when we draw an imaginary line, certainly it crosses uh, those circuits. So we can definitely say this is a plane whirl. Now the question is, what is its tracing? Again, to figure out the tracing, we're going to trace a line from the left delta to the right delta. So we're going to start, we're going to run along the ridge here. Then when it stops, we drop down one. So we drop down one. We trace it, it stops. So we drop down one. Trace it along, it stops. We drop down one. Trace it along, it stops. We drop down one. Trace it along. And then notice we're about as close to this other delta as we can get. So then if we imagine a, an imaginary line between these, we can see that there's one, two, three ridges. And we can see that the delta that our tracing runs outside of where that delta is relative to the core. So again, what we're looking at here is a plane whirl, again, with an outer tracing. So for our designation, we have a plane whirl with an outer tracing. All right, let's look at this fingerprint, though. Okay, So here we have our circular circuit formations here, nice little smiley face here in the middle. All right, so here's our type lines and our delta here on the left our type lines and our delta here on the right. All right, so how, again, do we do our tracing? So, by the way, first of all, is this a central pocket whirl, a double loop whirl, a plane whirl? Well, notice if we attach our imaginary line between the two deltas, we can see that that straight imaginary line definitely crosses, or at least touches, one of these circuits. So this is definitely a plane whirl, but then the question is, what type of tracing is it? To figure out the tracing, we start at our delta, we drop down, we follow this ridge all the way around. It doesn't bifurcate, right? It doesn't split or anything. Oh, here it bifurcates, so then we try, we follow it around. So if we put our little uh, dotted line in here representing our tracing, if we follow it around, follow it around, follow it around, notice we have a fork. So we go to the lower fork. Notice that now we're at a point closest to the delta as we can get. All right, but notice this time that the delta is actually out here. So if we count one, two, three, four ridges, notice that actually our tracing runs inside where the delta is relative to the core. So this time, instead of having an outer tracing, we have an inner tracing. So this would be a plane whirl with an inner tracing. So you kind of see how to do tracings, right? We start with the delta on the left. We follow the ridge. 
If it stops, we drop down a ridge, or if it bifurcates, we go the lower way. We come to a point as close to the delta as we can get, and then if there's three lines, if, if our tracing goes three or more lines inside the delta, it's an inner tracing, or looking at this last fingerprint we just looked at. If it goes three or more lines outside the delta, so we notice here we're three lines outside the delta relative to the core, so we have an outer tracing. Or if we back up another fingerprint, if our tracing either meets directly with or is within one or two ridges of the, the delta from left to right, then we have what's called a meeting tracing. So our tracings can either be inner, meeting, or outer. And then we designate it again by putting that letter next to the type of whorl. So if it's a, a plain whorl with an outer tracing, we put a PO. If it's a plain whorl, with an inner tracing, then we would put a PI. If it was a central pocket whorl with an outer tracing, we'd put a CO. If it was an accidental whorl with a meeting tracing, we'd put an XM. Remember, accidental uh, whorls are designated with an X. If we have a meeting tracing, we'd put an M. So that's how we do tracings. So in terms of our uh, fingerprint uh, notation on our card, so we've seen this card before. Remember, what type of fingerprint is this? When we put a slash, that means it's an ulnar loop, right? So any right slanting loop on the right hand is going to be an ulnar loop. What's this number here in the top right-hand corner? That's, that's our ridge count, right? So we see that this is an ulnar loop with a ridge count of 21. Here's another ulnar loop with a ridge count of 22. What's this R here? Well, remember, that tells us that this is a loop, but it's a radial loop. And remember, in terms of ridge count, this has a ridge count of 6, but whenever we have a, a radial loop, we add 50, so that's why we have the 56. Let's look at the right thumb, though, here. Here in our right thumb, finger number 1, we can see that we have a whorl. Here we have that target pattern, so we have a whorl, so we've designated it by putting a W underneath the fingerprint. If we were to look closely at this, we'd figure out that this is a plain whorl, so we put a P here. If we were to look with our magnifying glass and do our tracing, we would find out that the tracing is an outer tracing, so we've indicated it as a W whorl. Specifically, it's a plain whorl with an outer tracing. Or let's look at this fingerprint here, the left thumb. Again, it's a whorl, so we write a W. Uh, if we were to draw a straight line between our two deltas, we can definitely see that it crosses one of those circuit patterns, so it's definitely a plain whorl. So we've written plain or P for plain whorl. We can see it's an outer tracing, so we have our PO. Let's look here at our left ring finger. Again, this is a whorl, so we have W. If you look closely, we can see that kind of yin and yang. So we have a, a recurving ridge here. Here's another recurving ridge here. We have a delta and a delta. So this time we have a double loop whorl. So it's a whorl. We write W for whorl. And then in the top right-hand corner, we write a lowercase d, indicating it's a double loop whorl. So what does this letter M mean? Well, that's going back to our tracing. If we were to trace our, our, our tracing from our left delta to our right delta, we would see that it is a meeting tracing. And so you can see in terms of notation, this is how we handle uh, figuring out what type of whorl we have and what type of tracing we have. And it's important that we do this notation correctly because this notation is what's going to help us figure out how to classify our prints using a system noted, uh, called the Henry system, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So anyway, that's how you do whorls.